Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, and welcome to all of our viewers. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, today, we are speaking to Steve Biddulph. My apologies. Am I pronouncing your surname correctly? That's, that's yes. perfect. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're speaking to um, Steve Biddulph. He is a retired psychologist and an author. Um, he has written a number of best-selling books especially on, on, on parenting and, um, and raising children. But today we're speaking about his book, Fully Human, which if I may, if I may uh, rather than paraphrase what the book is about, I would actually rather just read for you from the, um, from the opening of the book where um, Steve describes it, I think describes it quite perfectly. It says, the aim of this book is to help you move freely inside your own mind, to turn the lights on, in whole levels of your consciousness that you have barely noticed were there. Once all the parts of your mind are awakened, they naturally work in more harmony and you can live a more powerful integrated life, um, integrated and spacious life. Um, the book is based on recent findings from neuroscience, matched with cutting edge psychotherapy, and of course with um, a lifetime's work, uh, uh, Steve's lifetime's work, helping people. So before we get started with, um, with, 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 Steve, with Steve, just a little bit of housekeeping from my side. Um, firstly, you will be able to purchase Steve's book from the Daily Maverick um, shop. Um, you can do that like, immediately throughout the course of the webinar, and you'll be able to purchase it, of course, after the webinar as well. And then secondly, to, and just to also note, for those who are purchasing the book, uh, the proceeds from the DM shop go to help independent journalism. So thank you, thank you very much for that, and thank you for supporting us. And then, and thank you, Steve. And then, um, please, if you sometimes you know, like you might have a slow connection. We try to set everything up on our side, so it's fine. But if something happens and you experience a slow connection, what helps sometimes is if you close all other browsers and you close any other apps that you might have open, so that might help. And then lastly, please keep sending your questions on the side there. Uh, we'll, throughout, the, throughout the conversation, we'll be picking out questions from there just to, um, to address to Steve. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to take all of the questions, <laughs> but um, we'll try and, and, and answer as many as possible or combine questions where, um, yeah, where we can. So to get started with Steve, Hi. So Hello, we're gonna. Yeah. So um, just before we even so before we get into the main concepts of the book, and this is two concepts, and which we'll get into later, the idea of super sense, uh, you know, ways of knowing within us, and the concepts that you've also put together of the four floor um, or four story mansion that is our lives. Before we get to those concepts, there's a chapter in your book the, uh, around trauma, titled "The Trauma We All Need to Heal." And I think that would be great to just chat about trauma and our understanding of trauma, because you speak of trauma, you speak of intergenerational trauma, you speak of uh, the trauma of the past century. And as South Africans, I mean, we know pretty much um, a lot of trauma in different ways. There's historical trauma, there's you know more recent times of trauma, and then obviously we've just come from the week uh, we've just come from, which was also one, an expression of some other trauma and also traumatizing in its own way. So I, if you can just chat about the subject of trauma and your understanding of trauma and the way in which you explore it in that chapter around intergenerational trauma. Oh yes, that's, that's a really important question in our time, Mali. And and it's a. I, I should explain that I have a very simple mind at myself, and and um and so my ways of understanding things are very practical. And and so, just as a good example of this, if let's say if you were driving to work one morning in your car and um and you were just going along like usual in a bit of a dream, you know thinking about other stuff and all of a sudden another car came suddenly into your lane at high speed and looked like it was going to hit you head on and maybe a stolen car or something. And, and then at the last minute, it, it, it just swerved and it didn't hit you, you know, it missed you by inches and went screaming off in the distance. And there'd be nothing really to do except um, kind of get, keep going and go to work. But, um, but you would not be the same person that you had mm -hmm. been um 30 seconds before um and 
um, you'd be just boiling with emotions from what it, you know, you nearly died and then you didn't. And, and, um, and when you, go, when you get to work, you would probably find that you, um, had trouble holding your coffee cup, you know, you'd have you'd be yeah. sort of shaken around. Now, the reason for that is we're designed, human beings and the human mind is, is beautifully designed. We have these things called emotions and they leap up to help us. You know, it, you might have needed to bust your way out of a wrecked car and you would have needed a lot of adrenaline and, um, and a lot of fear to help you to do that. Um, it could have been a couple of really stupid kids who, who got out of that car and, um, you know, laughed in your face, you know, and mm. you might have wanted to chastise them pretty solidly for that. Um, or worse still, it, the cars could have crashed onto the footpath and someone had been killed and, and you would mm. have terrible grief arising from that. And if you, it, when you get to work, um, those feelings are still inside you. And mm. if you're lucky, your workmates are, um, you know, understanding and they sit you down and you talk about it. And when you go home to your partner at night, you tell them and you burst into tears. And if, if all goes well, it, you will get it out of your system. You know, you will clear yes. that. Um, but um, many of us were raised by parents who had been traumatized themselves mm -hmm. and and they had coped with that or even had probably had to cope with it by just keeping on going and and um in in wars and in, in times of great poverty and injustice people just had to keep going and yes. so trauma piled on trauma and and so we can end up with the emotions of not just what happened to us, but what happened to mum and dad as well, rattling yes. around. And so that's a very simple way to understand it, that it's, it's, it's emotions that haven't had the chance to do their job and, and they can accumulate, you know, I've known people who've in the counseling room have burst into tears about something for the, mm. you know, perhaps they were a soldier and they burst into tears for something that happened 30 years ago. Um, that they have never been able to cry about. And, and when they cry about it, um, a whole lot lifts off them mentally mm. and physically. They can breathe better and they can, when one of their kitties cries over a dead pet or something, they don't get mm. cross with them. They put an arm around them and comfort them. And so we can, we, it's just really helpful to acknowledge that probably everyone, every one of you listening to this, um, webinar has, has a, a fair bit that you're carrying around and, mm. and the, the, the skills that we teach you in the, in the fully living book are designed to help you to begin to take off those layers and mm. to move comfortably through those and mm. recognize them. So, um, my wife, Sharon was very badly beaten as a child. It was routine in her family for the kids to be beaten. And, and she was really determined no one's going to hit any children in, in my family when mm. we had kids. But once or twice, um, she would have that experience of, you know, you're really stressed out and the kids are really giving a mm. hard time and being totally impossible. Sometimes she told me that she would feel in her body the, the impulse to haul back and just belt those little kitties mm. was like a, like a physical, um, a huge impulse would rush through her muscles and her nerves. And because she's a very strong woman and very determined, she just didn't do that. Yeah. Um, but it was important to, to notice it um, and to know where it came from. And she was lucky she had a handle on that. Um, yes. No, this isn't, isn't me. It isn't who I want to be. Um, but often we just don't know. We don't know what's driving us. Yeah, so that, that that's in a nutshell, Amali. Hope that makes sense to people who are, who are watching. That's fantastic, thank you. And I think as 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 we go through it, I, mean, I think another thing that fascinated me when you were talking about the relationship with um with trauma and 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 the body, and you were talking about the physical effects as well in the book, and you know just how it can also be expressed in in illness. And I think you mentioned a study that um, that looked at people who had high trauma experiences and the prevalence of yes. certain illnesses. 
Yes, yes. The, the, this was the, the, f the famous um, the Kaiser Kaiser Health Insurance Company in the in the United States. Um, it's, and and they 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 discovered that there were a lot of people dropping out of their programs for um, health programs that they were running, and mm. and and they decided to survey those people, and they found that two thirds of the people had experienced sexual abuse as children, mm. and this was the first ever. It was an anonymous questionnaire, and it was the first ever inkling that we had how widespread that problem was, because mm. these were rich American middle class people who could afford health insurance mm. and and um and so and they were finding this enormous rate of of uh, sexual abuse and and so they compiled a thing called the uh, adverse childhood experiences checklist and it's in the book and there's mm. 10 main things you know did someone go to prison in your family did someone commit suicide in your family um did you feel ever that that your parents might h harm you and there are 10 points and nearly everyone has a couple of those points. But if you have, and I forget the exact statistic, but um, the, the rates of cancer go up absolutely directly with, with, this, with the ACE scores. Um, mm. Now, some of that is because of choices, because when you're very stressed, you probably smoke more, um, you probably drink more. And so some of it was, expert, but when they, um, when they controlled for, even for those things, they found much, much higher rates of illness in people um, who had had trauma. Um, mm. And so, I'm a psychologist. I'm not a doctor, mm. um, but I just, but I, th I think our job is to is to help everyone to get well again. And yeah. so, the, the concepts of particularly super sense, which we'll talk about in a minute, yeah. is is something that you can do in your own home, um, mm. in any time you want to. That can begin to get you through these layers, and and um, and to and to feel okay, feel okay again, perhaps for the first time in your whole life. Yes, and I think let's go straight into that, uh, like because this it is one of the two main concepts and the key concepts of the book. So, what is super sense? Okay, a again, let me give you a, a, a good example. Um, the book actually starts with a, 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 a patient of mine from, from the 1980s. You can see, because this is a webinar, that I'm, I'm extremely old. And, and I was uh, working since the 1970s. And in the 80s, I had a patient who taught me a, a whole lot. Um, mm -hmm. She was a young doctor and a mum. And um, she'd had an experience where she'd been in a, a suburban train station uh, in the middle of the day. And a young man had called out to her. Um, from across the train station, and he was well dressed and he was good looking, um, you know, and that sense of just looks, you know, looked trustworthy. Um, and she was, like most women in the 1980s, conditioned to be helpful. And she was a doctor, and she her whole thing was, oh, he, he must he must need something, you know, perhaps he's lost his phone or he needs directions. Mm -hmm. So she was about to go and see what he wanted. But somewhere in the pit of her stomach, a little kind of twinge just happened. And she just somehow found herself almost having a, a panic attack. And she hmm. jumped in her car, locked the door, and skidded out of the car park and, and away from him. And she went home and she tried to put it out of her mind. Like, you know, she sort of thought, what's wrong with me? You know, what, what's, you know, what's, what's, am I going, losing my, I don't know, losing my grip. But mm -hmm. she got on with the day. But that night she sat, the kids were in bed. She sat down to watch the evening news. And the first item on the news was that a young man had attacked a woman in train station. And it was her train station. And it was minutes after she'd been there. And her husband came into the room and found her just sobbing on the couch with, mm. you know, that she, she'd almost been killed, that because she got away, someone else had been badly attacked. And uh, she was my patient because six months later, she was still having a lot of anxiety from that. Mm. And, but the beginning of her treatment was that the foundation of her getting well was that she had listened to a deep down sense mm. that that she was not safe and she'd taken notice of that and there was a part of her part of her mind which was taking care of her 
and um, and to feel proud of that and feel good about that, because we all have that very heightened perception, which mm -hmm. is in the in the right hemisphere of our brain, which we don't pay attention to, and, and I call it super sense because it's extremely sensitized to mm -hmm. very small cues. Um, it, it's like if the forest goes quiet, all of a sudden, you know, the jaguar or the panther knows go, you know, stop, yes. listen. And we brought that in our human heritage. And, and so super sense, and I'm sure many people watching will have, you know, and it's, and it's actually a physical sensation and you have it down the midline of your body. So yeah. as you're listening to me, Molly, um, if you go down in the middle of your body, you'll, you'll have feelings go, things, sensations going on there. People watching, you'll have, and it'll be along about what I'm talking about. You know, is this rubbish, you know, or mm -hmm. is this sort of makes sense? Or should I have gone to the bathroom before the interview? You know, it, it could, could be anything, but it's, it's there all the time. Um, and, and it's, it's giving you information, which is actually very up to the minute and very useful about about your second to second existence i, I i'm curious because as i'm listening to you because uh, i mean obviously there's the people go like I, I felt it in my gut or like a gut instinct and things like that so it's what is the science behind that because uh, you yes. know because there's the yeah there's a concept of gut instinct that we know and then other people might have things that might sound a little bit more, what's the word, not metaphysical, but, you know, like, what, woo -woo. what is the science? <laughs> woo-woo, <Yeah. Yes. laughs> woo-woo, I don't do you want to be yes. derogatory or anything. Yes, about, absolutely. About systems. But yes, woo-woo, yes. it's just like, so how do we know that that's not just, you know, some like woo-woo yes. idea? Is it, um, how based is yes. it on science? Yes, I should explain. F Fully Human is a, is a science book and it's, and it's, um, and it's, mm -hmm. here's how it works. We, our, our brain, like every animal is, has, has two sides to it and they're very, very separate. They, they quite distinct sides. One of them pays close attention to the, what we're focused on and it, and it thinks and it talks in words and the other side keeps the big picture open of what's going on all around us and and so if something it, it, you want to if people who've got children will know this one of your kids says something and there's just something about their tone or something about their facial expression that um you're too busy to notice but you sort of notice Mm. Now that goes into one side of your brain and um, and again, it's what happened with Andy in the train station. Part of her brain was picking up everything. Now, we can't possibly mm. pay attention to everything, but, but, but our mind still is scanning the big picture. And it doesn't, it goes to a place called the hypothalamus, sorry, hy hy hippocampus, sorry, the hippocampus, which is where memory is mm. all put together. And it, and it runs it past every memory we have ever had. Like the library is consulted. Mm -hmm. Where else have I seen or heard that? And if there's a mismatch with our lifetime memories, then it goes next door um, to the amygdala, which is the alert system. And the amygdala, mm -hmm. again, doesn't have words. It goes straight down the vagus nerve to our gut. And so, a panther or a lion doesn't think, you know, you know, the birds went quiet, you know, I better watch out. It just watches out, you know, it's bang like that. Mm. And, um, and so it's the wild creature inside us. Um, and, and, it, and it, it speaks in sensation. And so what we, because we are, we've got a wonderful logical mind, what we have to do then is, is confer with it and, and say, is this, is this just baggage? Um, for example, I had mm. a, a patient who, oh, actually, this was a friend, a friend of mine who was a, a, a Vietnam soldier, a Vietnam veteran um, mm. in Coffs Harbor. And he started, he was going fine for several decades. And then he started having bad panic attacks. And it was a really simple reason. A, a Vietnamese family had come to live in his street. And, um, but it just, you know, like most of the, our soldiers in Vietnam, they were in a state of permanent terror because mm. you never knew who was wanting to kill you. And and it just came back. And he did a really brilliant thing, a bit like Sharon with the 
the belting thing, he thought, okay, this it's not rocket science, you know, it's, it's, I'm just being reminded of, of yes. Vietnam. And so he went and he said hello to this family, introduced himself and got to know them and actually became mm -hmm. really good friends. And that mm -hmm. reassured his, his amygdala and his other part of his brain. I'm safe here. No one's going to blow me up. Mm. And, um, if, and if, and I may, so, so he, if I may interrupt you there, sorry, yeah. uh, because actually it reminds me of something else that you speak about in your book, which I think is really, really important just before we go into the full story you mentioned, that to, to be able to separate, um, the, the, this concept, the super sense concept that you present from, from any other biases that we might have. Because yes. it's, it's just like, how do you know if indeed this is based on, yeah, on an innate super mm. sense? Or how do you know if it's not based on biases that you might have based on like gen red, what, like race, gender, sexuality, yes. and things like that? Yes, exactly. Mm. Now, that's, you see, the problem we, with bias, which we're really starting to look at mm. seriously today, is that, is that it, is, it is largely unconscious. And, mm. and, and people are trying to get to get to the roots of root out their unconscious bias. Mm -hmm. Now, the only way to the only map we have to the unconscious is through the super sense, because if you go down the middle of your body and you find, you know, I'm feeling really uneasy. Um, you know, wh what is that? Um, perhaps I've, you know, I've never been around a, a transgender person before or uh, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And, and so you can interrogate it and you can find out what it is. And once you do that, it's like, well, that's all it is, you know? And, um, and so it's a kind of uh, the reason the book is called fully human is because yes. you're occupying, you're, you're taking back your, the whole of your mind and making friends with all the parts of it because the thing that does damage you know the, the simplest terms you know the, the the dad who beats up his kids or the um the teenage boy who goes rioting and 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 does a whole lot of damage to his community mm. um he doesn't have a foggiest idea what's driving him mm. um He's never sat down and examined, you know, well, it's because my dad and mum divorced or, or, you know, I couldn't get a job. Um, if he was, if he was helped, uh, if he was helped to, to go down and, and get to the roots of that, he mm. could put his anger where it should go. Or he could put his grief where it should go and, and, and act in a much more rational way to, you know, and so uh, people who are in touch with their super sense, mm -hmm. they tend to harmonize more and, yes. and it's it, because it harmonizes you with your own self, but also with the people around you. Um, and so you can be much, much more conscious through using this, you know, kind of odd thing where there's a, you know, there's a clench in your stomach and it's been there for six weeks, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and you just, well, all you do, if you're watching this webinar, all you need to, you don't need to buy the book. I'll tell you here, you know, all you, all you need to do is, is ask good questions. You know, mm. is this about sex? You know, is, is this about money or, um, am I scared or am I angry? And, and down there, they'll, it'll either say yes or no. You know, it'll be mm. like a little bit of thing, like it's something opens up a little bit and it's, yes, that's what it is. I, I, actually, just before you touch on those, I actually want to, because, because I remember from the book, a, a lot of what you're saying is also part of what you touched on when you speak about the, the concept of the four story house and the different, the different floors and the body being one floor and then the emotions, the brain, yeah. the spirituality. If you can just that, if you can just, just very briefly tell us what that's about. And then, and then if we can just go to talking, I, I suppose as you and I just, just to start talking about the body. Um, mm. as that first floor. Yes. Yes. Well, I, 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 in very simple terms, it's, it's mm. our mind. Um, our mind is not the same as our brain. Our brain is a sort of a, is like a, a bit of a kind of switchboard up on the top here. Um, but your mind is from the tip of your toes to, to the, to the, and, and probably even beyond outside your skin. And, and so, but to begin with, we're a large mammal. And so have you had enough sleep? Um, have you had a decent breakfast? Um, 
I, I know you're very fond of, of coffee, Mali, and 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 you know it's things that get your um, system working properly. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, have we had a a, a hug um, from our, our loved ones? And um, mm -hmm. so, you, you, first of all, look at all that stuff. Um, nothing is going to work with people who are hungry or because you'll get strung out. Um, mm -hmm. And then, and super sense is part of that. Um, and so the first floor, you know, it's, it's a very simple kind of language, you know, that's the first floor of your, of your mansion. Um, and now you come up, up another floor and, and there's this other layer, you know, you can be hungry, for example, and you're really pleased with yourself because you're doing some new age yoga fasting thing, you know, and you're in the third day mm. and, and you're hungry, but you're happy very different to if you're hungry because you haven't you know you haven't got any money and um, people stole your your food so so there's emotions coming next um as they arise out of your body but there's some somewhat different now some out of emotions then you know if you look at a little child growing then comes intellect is the next layer the one that we we you know go to school for and so that's three floors of your mansion. And so mm. you can move up and down. And the, the main point of this is for mental health and why we put it in the book is that some people get stuck on one floor. And so everybody watching would know someone who is stuck on the third floor. Mm. And they, and they all, they, they think and think and think and they talk and talk and talk. And, um, and they're generally really boring. Um, and they tend to be male, um, but not always. And they just, just stuck around and around in circles. And they really need to go down a floor and find out what is, what, what's in their heart that's driving that along. And also people watching, you'll have the experience of knowing someone who's stuck in their feelings. They're always angry or well, they're always um, depressed and just, uh, you know, it's exciting for about five minutes. And then you're thinking, oh, God, you know, they're, this, they're just always every time I see them, you know, mm. um, and they really need to come up. And, and a good therapist will say, you know, well, okay, let's talk about options for you here. You know, what have you considered, you know, and get, they need to come up a floor. And and we we can get. um very stuck. Now, there's a. Can I tell you a personal story, Mali, mm, about, yeah. about this? Because um, we've. I was because I was um, Anglo-Saxon English male. Worst possible prognosis for mental health, and um, and we were a young family. We had a little um, a little four-year-old son and Sharon and, and me, and we were really ready and keen to have another child. And, and so we did, we got, got pregnant and the, about the 14th, 15th week of that pregnancy, um, Sharon, who was a nurse, mm -hmm. um, suddenly went, went, started having contractions and, and at 14, 15 weeks, everybody knows that's not, that's not a good sign. Mm -hmm. And, rushed to the hospital um and i know there'll be you know hundreds of the people who are watching this today who've experienced this having a, having a miscarriage mm. um and um and i was i remember being with sharon in the shower in the hospital and and j just the, she's crying and delivering what we'd hoped for was they're not going to be our, our baby and um and we got through that and and i was logical, helpful husband mm. as best I could. And then the very next day I had to run a weekend training seminar for therapists. And, um, and I had the sense to tell them, you know, this is, um, this had happened to us. Um, but I had a job to do and, and I was there for them mm. and, and I had to get on with it, which that was probably just very bad timing because when that was over, for weeks and then for months after, I just felt grey and empty. And, and because of Sharon's own history, she didn't really want to talk about it either. And so I, I was in a, um, a pretty bad place. And 
something happened. It was very simple. We had a seminar room on our farm where I mm. where we lived. I lived on an old rundown farm, but we had a, a nice room for people to come to. And I went over there and I got my guitar down from the hook on the wall. And people watching, if you've got, if you're a musician, you play piano or play guitar, you, you know this. And sometimes you just, you just mess around, mm. you know, you play chords, you play melodies and, and a song just comes. And all of a sudden I recognized I was playing a song and the song was a Rolling Stones song called Ruby Tuesday. Um, and the, the words, I think, for you know, goodbye, Ruby Tuesday, who, who could hang a name on you? And all of a sudden, I'm just weeping. And I, I'm bent forwards over the guitar with my face, you know, on the ground, just sobbing my eyes out. And because I'm, Mali, because I'm a psychologist, there's a little bit of my brain, a tiny little 1% of my brain watching me crying thinking, mm. wow, look at that, you know, look at him go, you know, um, you really needed to do that, boy, you mm. know, and, um, and, and it was true. And after that, I could breathe again. And my heart was was open again. And, um, and so um, sometimes we need help to feel. Mm. Um, yes. And to, to even have those emotions. And yes. I, Whatever brings it about, it'll help. Yeah. I, 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 thank you for sharing that. And also, and then just looking at that, I mean, not just that condition, but just looking at that within that uh, that idea of, of of how you got in touch with different levels in yes. that experience with that guitar. And just to talk yes. a little bit about that, where in this idea of the four story body, emotion, intellect, spirituality, mansion. How, 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 how would you use that example to illustrate how you were able yes. to live through the different levels yes. of, yes. Your, of yourself? That's such a good question because, see, um, it was all involved. You know, my body had to do the sobbing. Um, mm. I, you couldn't think your way through that. And, mm. um, and emotions have a job to do and they produce the massive uh, endorphins, ma massive morphine morphine like substances in the body so we can handle it. but also yes. it was a song about a, it was a song about a girl marley it's, it's ruby mm -hmm. tuesday was a girl and we had a little boy and i'd never until that moment had the thought that what i had lost was a daughter mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. my own in my own heart that that was a daughter now of course who knows what it ever was, mm. but in my heart it was. And mm. so I could grieve for then for the daughter. And of course we have a daughter now and, and I've been able to love her wholeheartedly because I wasn't stuck with that. So I'm up on the third floor thinking, whoa, you know, look at that connection. Mm. And um, and the, the fourth floor, of course, which we haven't touched yet, was or spirituality which if there's time we could could look at but but that's again that that comes into it as well um mm. as, as as a kind of the, the the last the last layer of the mansion and, and actually so and you know which i want to talk about the second floor the idea around um emotions specifically mm. but just before we get um sorry just before we continue I just have to quickly, quickly for a second and just say a thank you to um, our sponsor who make, who's made this episode possible, which is Uber Eats. Thank you very much for that, to make all of this possible. And also, as we know, with everything that we're going through and, and restaurants closing. So it's also thank you for everything that system is doing for, you know, for restaurants to be able to keep um, to keep going. And now moving on to this idea of emotions, I re there's, there's a couple of sentences when I got to the chapter when you're talking about the emotions and you're talking about people, the importance of getting in touch with one's emotions and you spoke a lot about, you, so you wrote rather, a lot about the past century and, um, and, and people coming from a time where there was a poor connection between, you know, or rather, uh, a poor understanding of their emotions or people were being able to kind of repress emotions due to whatever historical facts, be it war, be it different things, or people just trying to survive in South Africa, be it apartheid, people just trying to survive and then sort of 
limiting their emotional bandwidth, as it were. And, um, and there's, there's one line that really, 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 really um, resonated, I put in the book, where you said, emotions won't hurt you, but it's an important thing for people who, who you know, on their journey to understand that getting in touch with their emotions or speaking about their emotions or being honest with themselves about their emotional world and emotional experience won't hurt them. Won't you please expand a little bit on, on, on that flaw and, and the emotions and how to deal with that? Yes, yes, it's great to have this really in-depth discussion, Mali. I'm so grateful. And and I think if you think in terms of, um, say there's a um, a father with a little boy and um, and they have a, a, a little pet dog in the in the, in their their family's had a pet dog that, mm. as long as a little boy has, you know, this little boy loves this pet dog and and then there's a you know sound from out in the street and they run out and, the, and their dog has been killed by a car and and the dad and the son are just standing there and the little boy's only perhaps four years old and he's just can see his dog dead on the road and the little boy just fills with tears. Um, but let's say his dad was, you know, was involved in in combat and had come from a you know a, a violent wartime era. Um, that dad, the way we wired up is is if as human beings, if we see another human being having an emotion, mm. our body wants to have that emotion too. We have a natural empathy with with everyone around us, and so the boys goes into grief and the dad starts to feel grief happening to him. Now he's aware that he's had much loved friends blown up in front of him and killed mm -hmm. in front of him. He's got grief beyond measure, which he's never dealt with. And he experiences, if I begin to let that through, I will go mad with grief. I will just never stop crying. Mm -hmm. And, and so this is all happening almost without even any words. All he knows is I have to stop that boy. And so he, he shouts at the boy and says, you know, you know, we'll, or in the very best scenario, he says, look, never mind, we'll get you another dog. You know, dogs, easy mm. to get hold of. Um, but in the worst case, he's, you know, he, he belts the boy. I've, I've known this to happen. Belts the boy says, you know, grow up, you know. Dogs die, you know, get used to it. And the little boy, you know, you know, be a man, you know, holds it in. And it's a, a, a muscular effort, tightens his eyes, tightens his face, juts mm. his jaw out. And now all that dad needed to do was, you know, if the dad had um, known about, um, and, you know, been able to talk with other war veterans about their losses and their griefs and, and discover that, you never you don't go mad from crying you just cry no one ever mm. cries for more than a you know half an hour and next time you cry a bit, a bit less and a bit less it, it, there's self-limiting things your mind produces the, the the endomorphins so that you can grieve and you can let go and it becomes to a peaceful place inside of you you can live in a world where we where things happen that are terrible but because mm. things happen that are beautiful as well and so the dad puts his arm around in his son and says, you're a good kid. You really love that dog. It's really, really sad, you know, and he just hugs the boy. And the boy feels, you know, two things at once. He's the sorrow for the dog and he feels the love of his father wrapped around mm. him. And it's okay. It's it's bearable. It's, it's hard, but it's bearable because dad is there. Mm. And so that's all it takes. Um, and we can break generations of, of messed upness um mm. so we you know i'm in all my books i'm always just saying you know you don't have to repeat history um do the work find it get to the bottom of your own pain and then you won't have to slam it onto the backs of your children uh, thank you very much for that actually because i um I've got, there's a question from um, from Rosemary um, says, please talk about spirituality. We are good. Definitely. I want to ask you about the spirituality. Oh, let's make the most of this time. We've got 20 more minutes. <laughs> so I want to definitely get onto the spirituality because I, I found that chapter also just quite 
fascinating. So Rosemary will definitely talk about that, but just a, a little bit more on the, another thing that you, you mentioned around emotion, where you said there are four basic, was it basic emotions or basic elements that make up emotion? And then you spoke of joy, anger, sorrow, and fear. And you spoke about how that basically defines um, what emotion is. So there's that. And also, um, Elzan asked a question that I, I think might link back to that. Oh, it might be two separate questions, but we'll see. Um, Elzan Frank says, many people confuse generalized anxiety or hypervigilance due to trauma with gut feeling. Can you please help us discern the difference? So if I can ask, yeah, if we can maybe let's um, let's chat about that, about Ozan's question. And then after that, if we can just chat about how those four um, is it emotions, make up emotion or feelings, joy, anger, sorrow, fear, make up emotion. Yes, yes. Now, I, I think I can. Um, the, the question about hypervigilance, um, mm. it, it probably deserves um, an hour on its own. And I apologize, this is going to be, mm. there's more in the book about anxiety, but this is going to be very simplistic. And I apologize in advance for that. Um, it's not the whole story that I can give you in the time we've got. But basically, um, the thing that's, when we're in a, a bad place, um, we and, and we are hyper vigilant, and very anxious. It, it helps to start to. We have to somehow start to sort that out, and and the, and the, knowing about the four distinct emotions it really helps with that, because um, when you go down into your body, sometimes what you'll find is that there's a. Um, it's a it's a very uncomfortable feeling. There'll be like a big knot in your stomach, or or your heart is really clenched, or something like that. And and so the first thing to do, and and if you if you're a therapist working with someone who's in a bad place, is say, look, you know, we can we'll take our time. There's no rush. Just you know, sit right, sit down in the chair, and just take a moment or two, and just breathe a little bit, and go down in your body, and tell me what you're experiencing. And let's say the person says, "Oh, you know, this, my my gut is just so t tight," and and then, okay, can you just give that a bit of room around so that the, the feeling in your gut, give it a bit of room around the outside of that sensation, um, so that you can feel where where it starts and where it where it, it ends. And if you make mm -hmm. space for the sensation, and if the person feels safe, and this is why it's a bit more complicated because you really need someone who is comfortable with a wider range of emotions than you are and is is okay with whatever you might be feeling so you have to trust them and that's not always immediate um and if you feel safe and you and you kind of you got your super sense says i'm safe here um then that sensation in your gut or in your heart or in your throat wherever it is will start to move and so, um, so I was working with a, 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 a person with, with, um, accumulated trauma just this week. And he had a very strong feeling in his, in around here in his chest. But when mm. it started to move, it immediately moved up into his face and into his eyes. And I started crying. And so it was, it was primarily turned to be sadness. Now, when that is dealt with though, There'd be something, there might be something else. There might be a real tension mm -hmm. in the shoulders. And, um, and you, you sit with that and, and you make a few guesses about that and see what happens. And, and then you make a bit of space for that. Suddenly your arms are just feeling like they just want to pound things and your, and your face is bright red. And, um, and sh sure enough, you've got some very valid anger and, mm -hmm. um, and you can own it. You see what what we want in a, my definition of a man of an adult man mm. or an adult woman too is someone who can stand with their feelings mm. and so they can be absolutely furious and it doesn't spill over and hurt anybody and so you know and, and you need anger you can't even chew a carrot without anger you know mm. it's it's like you know i'm gonna live and this carrot is gonna die you know and uh, it's me or you carrot and and here i go so, uh, anger is just a life force protecting mm. us and um and 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 same with fear um for example very often uh, 
in a problem marriage. Um, the husband is insecure about his partner loving him because he's really hard work and he's quite unpleasant. And, and, um, so he feels afraid. And so he acts angry around her, um, and just drives her further away. Whereas if he was able to say, look, I'm just scared. You know, my mum ran out on our family when I was a kid. And, and sometimes, you know, when you're chatting to people on the phone or men admire you in the street or something, I, I would just feel, I just remember my mum taking off, you know, and mm -hmm. his wife, well, you know, I promised to be married to you. You know, you're you're not the best looking guy in the street, but you know, mm. I, I love you. And and can you? Does that make sense? That he when he mm. when he owns fear, um, people can relate to that. Yeah, it, it's it, it's interesting. It makes me think of, of 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 another subject that you mentioned in the book around the times we live in and uh, around the. Um, I think you mentioned social media because um, you know our brains have evolved to handle only so many connections. Now we have to put ourselves out there, or rather we choose to put ourselves out there in front of so many strangers at a time. And and it's, it's not always, I mean, we're all obviously broken in many different ways, but uh, it's almost like how to, there's not as much empathy as one or as society needs. And, you know, but before we go into that, because of a, um, the short amount of time, um, uh, I want to just address the question that Rosemary Miller asked about about spirituality. And then I also found the chapter fascinating because I think it's titled um, the chapter in the book "Spirituality." It's not what you think, and, <laughs> and, and I love what you're saying about it being like um, about uh, search for a union with the world around us. Would you please just chat a little bit about how about that spiritual flaw? Of our whole story mentioned. Of course, of course, and um, it's a. Just imagine for a minute, you know, you, you've got your, you've got the rest of your mansion all going fine. You know, you've lit up all the floors. You know, people complain about their accommodation because you know when they just stay on one floor. You know, and mm -hmm. and so you've got your body and you've got your your heart is 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 open and you're thinking clearly. And then one day you're up on the top floor. Up on the third floor, and there's like a, um, like a, you suddenly notice like a trap door, um, like a a manhole or something. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of light coming through, and and a, maybe a bit of sound like bird song or music or something coming through the cracks in the ceiling, and you think I had never noticed that before, you know. And you get a you get a step ladder and you go up and you push on the trap door and, and bang up suddenly as the bright sky and you go up and there's a rooftop garden on your mansion mm. there's this rooftop garden and, and you know my, my sort of dumb little drawings it's it's like that and it's and it's open to the sky and this is the thing because up there you see the stars um you see nature all around you there's other people there's mm. all the beauty of the human race and the, and the and the natural world and suddenly you're out of your own skin and you're and you're just lost in in it all and in in the book we give a list of all these activities that is a kind of puzzling puzzle i give people what have these all got in common you know going to a a music festival um surfing um making love on the beach at midnight um getting drunk for goodness sake um um <laughs> Patting your dog, um, mm. um, dancing, um, um, playing harmonica, I don't, anything at all. Yes. Um, what is what is it they've all got in common? And what it is, is we love doing them because th we escape from our sense of being a lonely little person and we feel union. We feel mm. merged with everything. Cause, because, in fact, you know, if I can, again, I can, Best relate to it myself. I'm I'm getting old, and um, I'm not that worried anymore about myself. Um, I'm just a leaf on the tree, you mm. know, the, the, the human race tree, and I'm just the one. And one day I'm going to fall off that tree, and who cares? You know, there'll still be the tree. Hopefully, there'll still be the tree. We've solved climate change, and there'll still mm. be a tree. I care a lot about that. Um, but um but 
Steve bit off, who, who cares, you know? And, mm. uh, and of course, the thing then is to bring that back into your daily life. Um, not that important. Um, not that interesting. Um, um, it's more fun to look after the tree um, than to, you know, polishing the leaf, you know, <laughs> and think, is this a yeah. leaf better than anyone else's leaf? You know, and so, so now religion is a, is a way into spirituality. You know, if you have a mosque or you have a, a cathedral, the pillars of the cathedral are kind of like a tall forest and the windows are like the sunlight shining through into the forest. It's aimed to produce that feeling of awe yes. and, and surrender. And so I'm, I'm not knocking that. I think faith traditions of all kinds are a good, when they're working well, they're a really good help to us because we easily forget this. Um, and any, any spiritual practice, it just reminds us again, helps us get back there. Um, but interestingly, when you've got, you know, when you've got the fourth floor going, it kind of, yes. it kind of organizes all the others somehow, um, and kind of gives them a kind of a unity all the way through and, and a, a human being who's fully human all the layers are pointed the same way. What you're doing, what you're feeling, what your super sense senses is right. It's all unified. You know, so if you think of when people talk about Nelson Mandela, or they talk about any of the really great human beings, there's this feeling like yes. they were single, they were single pointed. They were unified. And the rest of us, we're all over the show, you know, we're this and that, yeah. and this and that. But if you keep shuttling between the layers of your mansion, you don't even have to work at it. They'll just begin to line up and they will just automatically think, oh, I don't like this job. You know, it doesn't feel right in my gut anymore. Or mm. I don't like that friend anymore. Um, uh, um, I can tell it's, it's, you know, I tried to override that, but no, it just isn't right. And it makes it easy to change. Yeah. Easy to to navigate um yeah sorry i've talked too much but that's no no no, no, no. That's, that's fantastic because i'm just so drawn in but actually uh, just I, I, I want to just address a couple of the questions that um that we've got just a little bit with the time we've got left and then um roger says steve in this time of physical distancing caused by trees as protection and safety what um, do you think or feel are the impacts of disconnection and um mental health on well-being but if I can just uh, then like sort of extend on that a little bit and just to talk about it in a way of almost what kind of um, what kind of techniques once we've defined the impacts on well-being can people use in order to improve to improve on yes. that? Yes. Now again, um, w when we have times that are difficult like this, it throws us back onto our. Um, uh, mm. our skills and our vulnerabilities that we've always had um it, it suddenly is in sharp relief and so um but and the answer is the same that that you have a huge you know a whole half of your brain and a, a massive system all through your organs the way the vagus nerve talks to the whole of your body this mm. is your own nature it's it's the nature that's inside you and it's wired up to the nature around you and so um, your children, your friends, the trees in the sky, animals, pets, even your garden outside. Um, and as, as Mali, you've said, you know, really minimize social media, really minimize mm -hmm. even the TV, anything like that. Um, we were designed to have very much reflective, you know, we were designed to walk along rivers for hours a day and and sit around fires with our loved ones telling stories at night time that's what we were made for um mm. we weren't modern life was never good for us and so this is a chance to to tune out and to tune in um or drop out and tune in mm. um and and what you find when you go down inside yourself is there's a kind of it's a treasure house there's treasure of memories and things that stories that needed time to finish you know, I'm remembering stuff from my teens at the moment. That's just like, mm. oh, 
so embarrassing and and oh i wished you know that girl really wanted to be kissed and i didn't even know that you know i'm an idiot um and i'm fixing up things that are you know thousands of wounds um mm. finding time to heal and so use it to your advantage um and come out of it so much more attuned to the human race we're going to need to work together this century or we won't have another century it's mm. this is this is um this is game over for the human race if we don't learn to unify and your super sense is the radar that helps you to do that it's, it's interesting actually when you're talking about this uh, the process of healing because because there's a question that we've got from felicity who says what is the impact on children in countries where there is continuous war and um which also reminded me of a part in the not to pull to back into the emotions chapter obviously this is the <laughs> this is the chapter that really kind of like i, I thought is super super relevant for you know, especially for this period because there were two things you were talking about um about programs uh, the, the phrase that got me was rehumanizing warriors i think you were talking about soldiers that had been um, in war and, and and what was needed in order to be able to shift people back into into regular society but also and we speak a lot of like uh, about post um, traumatic stress but you speak also of um post traumatic growth so just yes. this I, this question that felicity was asking about um about the impact on children in countries where there's continuous war kind of maybe if you can speak on that um and alongside uh, alongside the idea of post traumatic growth yes now of, of course the, the children shouldn't be in war and and this is a terrible situation and and it, it really it reflects so badly on our capacities that we that this happens at all but there's a human capacity because life has as often in our history been terrible and it's a capacity to postpone and so for instance if if you have a surgeon who's operating on you um you actually or even a paramedic or a policeman or a soldier you actually don't want them to be in touch with their feelings mm. you want them to be as robotic as possible um and just be a, like a robot technician uh, because if a surgeon was in touch with his emotions that would be pretty rough um he couldn't do do what he does so we have this human capacity to set our feelings aside and and that's a normal survival skill and the difficulty then and what we're all my colleagues all over the world are doing with with war war zone children mm. is we have to then unpack that when the time it's getting back to normal is the problem mm. because because your your amygdala just thinks it's still going on and and so so working through play and art and creativity and and group work and storytelling and the use of the arts and and just a lot of human patience and care mm. um and and because there are just not enough psychologists to go around and so all of us are working on ways to to put the tools out there um we can we can get people back into normal and and we kind of owe it to them because mm. Um, you know, child soldiers, for example, we, we, we it's the, some of the work with that is beautiful because mm. th they were little boys when that started and the horror that they've carried inside them is, is, it's very touching to see. And, but there's something perhaps to give you hope because this is very difficult mm. is that once you're through trauma, you do not go back to normal. You go to a, a higher level. You, you have opened your heart in hell. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and and so all of my trainee therapists turned out to be the ones who are good are ones who have had trauma who've had mm -hmm. horrible abuse they are the best therapists because they they know the ways out of suffering and their clients mm -hmm. can sense in them this person this is not just a middle class person who's done a master's degree this is someone who's traveled this road and there's something mm -hmm. about someone who you know, as I said about my wife, Sharon, she's the best mother I've ever met. Um, she had the worst childhood that I've ever heard described. This mm. something happens that Mali's 
gro- there's a growth possible. And if you're a therapist watching this, never aim for normal, never aim for well adjusted. Your trauma patients will be something special. And I don't mean that in a patronizing sense. It's in a sense of keep going until they find a way to, to use and transform what they've experienced. Um, they will not be boring people. 